Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. It is a glorious day here in Arkansas. I am loving this weather and I am super excited because this week while we were doing pickup and deliveries, a customer asked us to take a old lawnmower that had been sitting in their yard for years. And what does free lawnmowers mean? Free money, baby. So <laughs> let me show you what I got. I know what you're thinking. You're like, it's a Troy built. It's old. Why are you so excited about this mower? It's got a Briggs six and a half horsepower flathead engine on it. Y'all, they quit making this engine over 12 years ago. They used to be a dime a dozen, but these days they're like a diamond in the rough. If you have a mower with this engine on it, man, take care of it because it will last a lifetime. Let's see if I can show you the year model of this engine here. That first two digits of the code number number of the model type and code here. This is where you find it on these old Briggs is a 07. So we know that this mower is a 2007 model. We can also go off the model number from the deck and by going by the fifth digit, it's a seven. So we know it's either a 2007 or a 2017. So yeah, we know this is a 2007 model. But first we gotta check and see if this thing has any potential to run. So before I start, I'm gonna give it a good once over, make sure it's got potential to put my time and effort into. First thing I'm gonna check is the underside. The deck looks like it's in really great shape. The back chute still looks good. The blade is still perfectly straight. It is dull, but I can actually sharpen this one and reuse it. The blade adapter is not broken. It's in good shape and the crankshaft looks straight. Now I am excited because in 2007, they made better decks on these things. It is super sturdy. Next, let's check the oil and make sure there's some in it. Now, of course we prefer to see good oil, but probably not going to happen. It's usually black. Well, it's got a little in it and it actually doesn't look that bad. What we don't want to see is gray oil. That would mean that there's metal shavings in there and we don't want to work on a dead engine. Let's check it again. Well, it does have a little bit of oil in it, so that's a good sign. Now let's hope it doesn't have some rank fuel in there. Oh, it's completely empty and looks clean. Y'all, I'm locking this. Now, although the mower has been sitting for a long time, I think fortunately it hasn't been sitting outside because it doesn't have any signs that the elements have been wearing on it. Like usually the bag would be rotten, more things would be rusted, the cable would be locked up. And fortunately though, our kill cable is even working still. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air filter, give it a little spray and see if she pops off. Need the new air filter. Oh yeah, buddy. Well, we know we got fire. So at this point, I really just want to throw some gas in it and see if it's going to run. But from a past experience, I have zero confidence that if this mower's really been sitting for years, that it's not going to leak the fuel through the carburetor after I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and dig into this carburetor and see what's going on. So I went ahead and removed my shroud just to get it out of the way so y'all can see what's going on. I'm taking the three bolts holding the air filter base onto the carburetor with a 5 16 Oh yeah, that's got some gooky up in there. Take it off my breather tube. Breather tube still looks good. Let's go ahead and get this fuel line off. Also, I love these pliers with a curved edge. These are Nimpex. I, I guess I'm saying them right from Germany. Viewer sent them to me. Thank you so much. Ooh, that fuel line is falling apart. I don't want to come off. Wow. Oh, we can't. There we go. Wow. Yeah, that fuel line is super hard. All right, to take off the carburetor, I am going to want to switch out to my 3 8 nut driver. And a lot of you have asked about these. They're a Weehaw brand. I love them. I leave them in the description box below. 
if you want to get your own. things gross let's see what she looks like inside so i got the outside cleaned off and i just wanted to say this i had so many customers that would come in and say i cleaned my carburetor but to find out that they had only sprayed off the outside if you don't actually open it up you're not cleaning it let's take it over to the bench and open it up all right to remove the bowl nut we use a half inch Well, it's not too bad. Let me show you. I only have a few little spots of rust and sediment in the bottom of the bowl. That's going to clean up really nice. Take this float off. There's no gasoline in the float, so we'll be able to re reuse that. And the rest of this carburetor looks pretty dang good. You can tell that the, the seat for the needle is swollen. That definitely needs to be replaced, but this thing's going to clean up super good. I don't know if you can see it as good as I can, but this thing looks actually beautiful. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to get out on this repair pretty cheap. It needs a carburetor kit. The part number is a 498-260. It needs an air filter. That's a 491-588. It's going to need a new piece of fuel line. And if you get the Briggs fuel line, you're going to want some new hose clamps because they decided to change the outside diameter a while ago. It's going to need a brand new plug and some oil. So let's get to fixing. Now first, let's see what's in this carburetor kit because it does come with extra pieces that you're not going to end up using. Um, we are going to be using a air filter mounting gasket. We are going to be using a bowl gasket. So we don't need that one. And we've got a brand new needle and seat and bowl nut gasket in here now. I'm not gonna change all this stuff out. This one doesn't have anything that I have to worry about there. So yeah, we're just, we need our bowl nut gasket, our needle, our seat. Go ahead and change out the needle rod. That's pretty much it. Now these are stupid simple to clean up. And the reason I like to put kits in the OEM carburetors is because the metal is just made better than any of that aftermarket Chinese carburetors. I mean, if you want to go simple, it's going to work for a while, but you're going to end up having issues with it in the long run. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all the old parts of the carburetor, that carburetor mountain air filter gasket, and then we want to get our bowl gasket off here. That thing's coming off in chunks. That's nice and hard. And we want to remove our seat. Now you could either use compressed air by blowing through the fuel inlet, or you can pick it out. They, there is a special tool for this, but most people don't have it. So we're just going to pick it out. But you want to be careful not to scratch up your walls in this. You want to get in that center and pull it out that way. Hopefully you can see that. My seat is so brittle and hard, it's just breaking up into pieces. So I'm just going to blow it out with my air. All right, blew that thing right out of there, and I'm going to give this thing a good spray in every little hole it's got. Now, while I'm cleaning this, there's some points that you're going to want to really pay attention to. You've got a little tiny hole right here, and that's for your prime. You've got a hole right here for your low speed, and then you've got your emulsion, too. Let me show you that down there. Now, we're going to get our wire welding tip cleaners. This is what I like to use to uh, get in all those tiny holes and clean everything out. And I'm just going to poke it through, clean it, spray it again, and make sure everything's uh, cleaned out good. Now on these carburetors, the bowl nut is also the jet. It does have a hole going through the side, hole going through the bottom. You'll want to clean those out and make sure they're clear. Now we can start putting this thing back together. And the first thing we're going to start with is the needle seat. Now when you have a brand new needle seat, let me show you here. One side has a rib going all the way around it, and the other side is completely flat. The flat side goes towards the needle. 
So once you put it in, you're gonna to wanna to find something that is the same size as your seat. You could use you know, the blunt end of a drill bit, something like that. And you're going to want to press it evenly as you go down and firmly and make sure that it's seated well in the bottom. Now I like to use something like a pick and just set it loosely on there. That way I can feed it down into the hole. Because if you just try to put it in there with your fingers, it'll flip over on you every single time. I don't know why, but it does. Once it's down in there, you can press gently to get it to straighten out for you. Once it's straight, you can go in with your blunt edge and push it in place. Once you have it seated correctly, it should look blunt just like that. And the rest is simple. We're gonna go ahead Put our bowl gasket on, grab our float, slide the needle up in, set it in place, put our float lever back through, just like that. We can go ahead and grab our brand new bowl nut gasket, put it on our bowl nut. Throw our bowl on there and tighten it down. Now there's two ways to check to see if what we did worked and that it's going to actually shut the fuel off. Turn your carburetor upside down with the bowl up. If you have a vacuum tester, you attach it to your fuel inlet. Give it a few pumps. Oh, are we there yet? No. And we watch it go up and see if it holds. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we're good. Or you could just attach your new fuel line and ah, try to blow through it. If nothing goes through, you know you got a good seal. When you turn it over, you blow through. Air is going through. That means fuel is going to go through. Now, in these carburetor kits, it comes with two air filter mounting gaskets, and they are different. Um, one, I think, works for horizontal and one for vertical. They uh, This one has an extra little hole on it. This was the one that actually fits it. And sometimes, even if you have a brand new gasket, these back bases will warp. There's been plenty of times that we've had to uh, apply two gaskets to actually get a good seal for the prime. Fortunately, we do not have to change the primer bulb. Now, Briggs has primer bulbs, some with holes and some without holes. And if it's not cracked, I mean, this is one with a hole, it still feels good, so. So, let's go put everything back on the mower and see if she runs. I went ahead just to make it easier. I already attached one side of my fuel line on here. I'm just gonna go in like we took her off.
All right, let's see if she starts. Give her a good prime. Y'all, she runs so good. For a 17-year-old mower, she starts first pull, runs better than anything you can buy today, and cleaned up really well. Leave a comment below and tell me how much you think I can get for this used mower. So guys, thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. If you find yourself coming back to my videos over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. And if you like these kind of videos where I turn someone else's trash into my treasure, check this video out right here.